force in anything, anything, anything. He wants to do it for you tonight. Come on. He can do anything but fail anything, anything, but fail anything, anything, but fail anything, anything. He wants to do it for you, anything. He loves you so much. We serve a faithful God. Oh, yes, he We serve a faithful God. Somebody's sick tonight, he can do it, anything, anything. He can touch your body. He can touch your soul. Hallelujah. The Lord loves you yes. so much. He wants to do it for you tonight. He wants to do it for you tonight. Come on, receive from the Lord. This word from the Lord tonight. He says, I'm going to touch you tonight and meet you right where you are. The Lord said, I'm going to touch you and meet you right where you are tonight. He can do Yes, God can do anything. It would be robbery on tonight. Amen. Amen. If we don't stand on the shout, I tell you what, I just, I just shout on myself. Glory to God. Yeah. This little old Putnam County girl. Amen. <laughs> Apostle Chambers from the north side of Jacksonville. Why you got to be from the north side? Come on, put your hands together and welcome Mr. Danny Glover. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God can do anything. Oh, my God. <laughs> Eat your heart out. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh. It was so funny. The first time we were talking, the first time we were talking on the phone, and Mr. Glover has a way of talking to you like he's known you all your life. You know, he, he, he sits down and talks to you like he's known you uh, the, the whole time. And I like that because he's operating in a principle of investing and sowing. And you got to give back, people. You got to give back. Mr. Glover, God bless you. We're so glad to God welcome you here you. on God tonight. Bless you. Just with, with sharing with Miss Rochelle and just talking about your meeting and what now, how you together are sharing and giving back and teaching people and giving them the opportunity and information how we can economically empower, thank you, economically empower ourselves and each other. I heard Ms. Glover say, uh, Ms. Uh, Salisbury say something today. She said, we're either being employees or employers, but we don't know about being entrepreneurs. Well, you know, I, I, I'm just, um, let me let me just praise the Lord for allowing me to be here with you. Oh, thank you so and, much. And uh, his guidance is there, you know, unseen and seen Amen. all the time. Thank you. But I, I had the fortune of being, of being the child of two wonderful, wonderful human beings, my parents, my mother and father. And, and if, if, if I am able to shine a little bit of light on the world, the people, what is happening to them is because of the light that they've shined on me, Amen. you Amen. know. And I, I, I think about them on every day, you know. My mother from rural Georgia, poor farmers, mother and father began to share croppers. Mm -hmm. Her mother became a midwife, made a little money, put that money together, sold eggs and milk and butter and everything else to put that money together, pick cotton and all that, to buy a farm, which still is in our family, to buy a farm and, awesome. and send their child to college. 
wow. even though they had never gone past the third or fourth grade because they couldn't go to school in September. Part of my moral underpinning was that my mother said that I'll be in grief and I will be forever grateful for my parents because I didn't pick cotton in September. I went to school in September. Consequently, she graduated from Payne College in 1942, and I'm sitting here by the grace of our God and the fact that my mama didn't pick cotton in September. Come on, <laughs> praise God for that. Amen, <laughs> amen. See, a lot of people now, I'm, 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 I, but in, in these parts and, and, and in a lot of areas that are uh, from here and a lot of people that uh, in our, our, a lot of our viewing areas can relate to because um, – my, 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 my dad was also from, from, from Georgia, Cuthbert, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, rem I remember the, the stories and things that they told, but this is something important, what you were saying. And a lot of our young people, especially our young African-American men out there, you've got to realize the sacrifice and price that was paid for you to slough around. you taking advantage of price that was paid and, and paved, roads that were paved on your behalf. Now there's opportunities now that is, things are there for you that you need to take advantage of that you do not have to be a statistic. You do not have to be a number. You know, I, 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 you, are, you are so right on that. And from someone who comes from community development, my 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 experience comes from community development from the time that I was 20 years old. For the next 10 years, I either worked informally or formally in programs. That means that I attended meetings and as I watched communities attempt to grasp the concepts of what I consider democracy and participatory democracy, grasp the ideas that they can be involved in changing their community and changing their lives. On the one hand, I saw this, and I saw this in, in enormous ways from, cr they were cross-generational, mm -hmm. from, 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 uh, from women and men who said that we can have, we are empowered right here. What happened in that period of time, that precious moment, all of this is uh, that uplifting and moving from the civil rights movement, the early 70s and everything. What I saw that was that all that was eviscerated. Dr. King talks about that in his last speech, in his last book, when he talks about where do we go from here, community of chaos. And he knew that essentially that all that energy that manifests itself in change, all that energy that's embodied in all of us, young people and everything, had to have an outlet. Exactly. If it did not have an outlet, it would find itself morphing or uh, uh, going into directions that it had. And what has happened, and this is, this is not to in any way undermine individual integrity and individual pers uh, perseverance and everything else, but what had happened, there was some place where all that became a disconnect, and I watched it. I watched young men who worked with me, who had made a choice not to be on the street, but to be engaged in trying to change that community. They needed the space to try to do that, the resources to try to do that, and everything else, and now often that wasn't available to them. Mm -hmm. So you, you have this cycle that continues and continues and it continues. Not to make any excuses, because we all have to get up in the moment, morning, and we all to have to get up in that morning when we wake up by mm -hmm. God's grace to have some sort of purpose. That's it. You right. get up in the morning mm -hmm. to have some sort of pur purpose. Mm -hmm. And we see, and I see, and it br saddens my heart, where this wasted human resources languishes in our streets, sits there, just can't, in some sense, can't explode and tell us what it is. In some sense, does not have the, ch the, the opportunities available and at the same time, knowing that if they do explode in a certain kind of way, they'd end up having a record, end up in jail, right. and further disenfranchised. Because right. once you go to jail, and I think one of the largest 
largest populations yes. of African American men who are disenfranchised yes. is right in this state right here. It is. It is in the in state, state of Florida. In and it not only that, and and I I know that uh, with Apostle Chalmers and myself, that God has done something even with establishing and placing us to be here for not only this network, but for the other ministries, the Embassy Fellowship of Independent Churches, NEFM, and especially Bodybuilders Television Network for having that platform, as we say, not only to evangelize and expose, but to educate and bring economic empowerment. Well, that's the beauty. That's the beauty of what you do, the beauty of what myself and Miss Sal Salisbury are presenting. <laughs>